Coming up, Super Tuesday closes in on the Democratic nominee. And later, Klobuchar and Buttigieg's dropouts changes the race for Democratic candidates. The baseball team is coming off an up and down series this weekend in Minneapolis. And one Iowa basketball player kept the tradition going. We'll have more for you in sports. And will the sun be sticking around this week? Stay tuned to find out. All that and more coming up on this Tuesday morning edition of DITV News. Don't go anywhere. DITV News starts right now. Good morning and thank you for tuning in. I'm Bailey Chihan. The polls are open in 14 states for Super Tuesday. While no candidate can win the Democratic nomination on Super Tuesday, the results will likely single out the eventual nominee. This year's Super Tuesday is especially important because it includes California. In the past, California has held its primary in June when the stakes are lower. 30% of delegates awarded come from California. To win this key state, candidates will need to appeal to Latinx voters. Senator Bernie Sanders is projected to do the best according to a poll out yesterday from Latino Decisions. All eyes are on former Vice President Joe Biden and Senator Bernie Sanders, who are the front runners of this dwindling pool of Democratic candidates. Speaking of the changing roster of Democratic candidates, this morning we have Daily Iowan Politics Editor Julia Shanahan in the newsroom. Julia, what does the recent drop out of Amy Klobuchar and Pete Buttigieg mean for Biden and Sanders? So with Amy Klobuchar and Pete Buttigieg both dropping out, those were two key moderates in the race. Both flew to Dallas, Texas last night to formally endorse Joe Biden, signaling moderate support around Biden in an effort to slow Bernie Sanders in his more liberal platform. Bernie did very well in some of the early voting states, so it'll really come down to how voters feel in the other 14 Super Tuesday states and if liberal appeal is going to win the Democratic nomination this year. What will the candidates have to prove to win today? Today, candidates will have to prove that they can garner a broad coalition of support among voters. Pete Buttigieg was the Iowa caucus winner, and Iowa being 92% white, Pete had a really hard time appealing to people of color, so it'll really come down to who can garner more support. Um, we have DI politics reporters in Vermont and Minnesota today talking with Super Tuesday voters, so be sure to follow DI politics Twitter for that coverage. Thank you, Julia. Now let's take a look at today's forecast. This morning, the temperature is sitting at a nice 39 degrees with lots of sun. The high for today is 53 with a low of 35. This evening, the temperature will drop back down to 43 degrees. Tonight would be a great night to watch the sunset. This week, we will be seeing highs in the upper 40s and mid to upper 50s, and lows will sit in the 30s and 40s. Overall, this week is looking like our first nice full week in a while, so make sure to take some time outside today and enjoy the sun. Last week, the Iowa City Foreign Relations Council held a meeting where a University of Iowa physician spoke about the hospital's preparedness for the viral infection COVID-19, also known as the coronavirus. Here's DITV reporter Katie Wadman with the story. The spread of coronavirus strikes panic across the United States, but as University of Iowa students, we're asking how this affect us and our everyday lives. A report of the first U.S. death in Washington state, an Iowa man that's being monitored, and cases of college students diagnosed with COVID-19 brings concern to the Iowa community. Professor of Emergency Medicine Dr. Hans House spoke last week at the Iowa City Foreign Relations Council meeting, hoping to inform and bring clarity to the university. It's about 80% of patients are going to have a, a, a bad cold, maybe a fever, maybe a cough, and that's about it. Um, it's in a small percentage of patients that can get respiratory difficulty, uh, including cough, shortness of breath, and respiratory failure. Dr. Hans House advises to wash your hands frequently and to not panic about traveling over spring break, but large gatherings in the future could potentially be dangerous. Classes might have to be canceled or at least try to be held online as much as possible, and unfortunately it could have a real impact on the Hawkeye football season. Reporting from Congregational United Church, Katie Wadman, DITV News. Thank you, Katie. For more information on the coronavirus and preventative measures, you can visit cdc.gov. The jury trial for former Iowa Hillel director David Weltman begins today. On August 29th, Weltman was charged with second-degree sexual abuse 
of a nine-year-old boy during Hebrew lessons in February or March of 2019. Weltman's ex-girlfriend, Nilly Krause, said Weltman admitted to being sexually attracted to boys age 7 to 12. Weltman's defense has argued that Weltman's ex-girlfriend's testimony should not be used because it is irrelevant to whether the crime occurred or not. And it is a beautiful day this for talking about sports. The baseball team won two or three games this weekend at the Cambria College Classic in Minneapolis. And we have baseball beat reporter Kimberly Bates in the newsroom to talk about the strength of this Hawkeye team. Kim, Coach Heller said a few weeks back that Iowa's bullpen was so strong that the decision on who was going to be the starters this weekend was going to be difficult. How did that strength show? Absolutely. I mean, so Iowa had all of their three core starters this weekend, but where they really saw their strength was outside of the bullpen. So we had Jack Dreyer in on Friday night, and Trace Hoffman pitched a great two and two-thirds innings of relief for him. And then Saturday gave Grant Judkins his third successful start of the season. However, um, Trenton Wallace came in and gave him a nice three innings of relief as well. And then Grant Leonard came in and did what he does best and recorded a nice save for them. Um, Sunday got tricky as the Hawks went through six different pitching changes, including bringing Dylan Nedved from shortstop up to the mound for two innings. But then Grant Leonard came back in for a second night in the row, and it gave him his third save of the season already. And Iowa's offense also looked powerful this weekend with two come-from-behind wins against ranked teams. How were they able to get past two dominant ACC teams? So the ACC is really no conference to mess around with, especially in baseball. Um, eight, 14 of, 18, of the 18 runs that the Hawks scored this weekend were all, were all in the seventh inning or later. And um, that include home runs from Peyton Williams, Isaiah Fallard, and then that solo two-out home run from Austin Martin on Saturday night that walked off UNC. Um, Zeb Adrian also had a very successful weekend. And he was, as he was um, <clears throat> added to the Cambria College Classic, all tournament team um, with his three hit game Saturday and then his single RBI on Sunday that really came at a crucial time against Duke. Thanks Kim. The Hawks are back in Iowa City today at Dwayne Bakes Field for their 2020 home opener against the Grandview Vikings at 4 p.m. Moving from the field to the court, senior Kathleen Doyle is keeping up tradition in the Iowa women's basketball program. That's right Dallas. Doyle was named the 2019-2020 women's Basketball Big Ten Player of the Year yesterday, making it the third year in a row that an Iowa player has won the honor. With Megan Gustafson winning the honor the two seasons prior. <laughs> Doyle also earned unanimous first team All Big Ten's honors from coaches and media, making her a three-time All Big honoree. In 18 conference games this season, Doyle averaged almost 20 points per game, along with a conference best 6.3 assists and shot 47% from the field. She also posted double figures in all 18 matches, including two 30-point and seven 20-point games. Doyle and the rest of the team earned the three seed in the big tournament this weekend in Indianapolis. Where they will be defending champions. While the women are preparing for the postseason, the men's basketball team still has two regular seasons game left. But their last home game is tonight against Purdue. And that also means senior night. That's right, Dallas, three seniors will be recognized tonight. Ryan Creener, Bakari Evelyn, and Riley Till. And Creener is the true definition of a born and bred Hawkeye, hailing from Spirit Lake, Iowa. The Hawks are 14-1 at home this season and looking forward to a rematch with the Boilermakers after their February 5th, 104-68 loss in West Lafayette. And junior Luca Garza is only 14 points away from breaking the 50-year-long single-season point record of 699 set by John Johnson in 1970. The Hawks tip off tonight at 8 p.m. in Carver Hawkeye Arena. Dallas, I think that if the Hawks really want to win the Big Ten this season, they should Maybe add me on the team. Here we go again, Tanner. Really? I mean, come on. <clears throat> Perfect form, I'd say. Yeah, I'll send that straight to Fran. Be sure to check back tomorrow to see how the Hawks did against Purdue. Call me, Fran. Bailey, back to you. And that, thank you for tuning in for this Tuesday morning edition of DITV News. For all the latest news, make sure to head over to dailyiowan.com or pick up a print edition of the Daily Iowan on stands now. For DITV News, I'm Bailey Chihan. Have a great day, Iowa City.